Today, I want to share with you the joy of using this little camera. It's not new, and it's definitely not the best, but I really enjoy taking photos with it. Hey guys, I'm Kebs, and I'm not a good source for gear reviews. This video is not a review, and I won't tell you specs you probably already know. Instead, I'll show you how I'm using it and why I enjoy shooting with it. I have this camera with me all the time, even on those days when I don't intend to shoot. This camera lives in my bag. I carry it with me when I run errands, when I work outside, or when my wife and I go on a date. Having a little camera that is always with me means being ready for the unexpected photographic moments. Even though this is my off-duty camera, I have to admit that I find myself shooting a lot of photos with it. Maybe because when I have it, my mindset shifts to just taking snapshots and experimenting. With my bigger camera, I find myself being more mindful of the composition. But with this, there's no pressure. Because of its size, it attracts less attention. Less attention means more chances of candid photos. People mind me less when I'm using this. Maybe because with this camera, I look less like a photographer and more like a tourist. Or someone just walking around taking photos and doing nothing serious. I blend into the environment more. Speaking of blending in, with this camera, I tend to look down on the flip screen while shooting. From a distance, it looks like I'm just fiddling with my phone. It does not have a viewfinder, which for me is totally fine. The act of bringing the camera up to your face attracts attention, especially when you are walking around and not stationary. With my bigger camera, I experience people dodging my general direction even though I'm not taking photos of them, just because I was looking at the viewfinder. Using the screen also provides more reach and can get me closer to the action. I find myself shooting a lot using my thumb because of the handling of this camera. For this reason, even when people notice the camera, they are likely to think that I'm taking video and not photos. Some people would even pose for the camera for a momentary spotlight. With this focal length, you really have to get close to the subject if you want to feel the frame. And while it's usually not my style to shoot up close, this camera makes it so much easier. I actually challenged myself to take photos of people up close for this video, which was more comfortable than expected. I love that this camera is so simple. I can set the settings once and rarely have to change them during the day. Sometimes, not at all. I use aperture priority and manual focus. Depending on the type of street photography that I will be doing, I usually pre-focus at 1.5 meters. Zone focusing makes close-up shots much easier because sometimes I don't even need to look at the screen. As long as I have an idea of the distance, I trust that the subject will be in focus. Plus, I can easily shift back to autofocus when needed. You really don't have to be technical to enjoy this compact camera. I'm sure some of you experience handing over your camera to someone and they don't know what to do with it. You have to explain how it works. With this camera, I never had that experience. I can simply hand it to someone and they can start taking photos. In fact, this camera is so easy to use that my wife enjoys shooting with it. The quality of images that I get with this camera is decent. Not the same quality as my other more expensive camera, but good enough for my purposes. I think in most cases, you really don't need the best image quality, especially if you're taking photos for yourself and not for paid work. I 
I'm not saying that we should not strive for quality because we should. It's just that when we look at our images, we rarely look at quality as the one that makes or breaks the image. An image will not automatically be beautiful because there's no noise or because it's sharp. Quality enhances the photo, but it's not the essence of the photo. If the quality is not that great, then why not just use our phones, right? I do use my phone from time to time. Fortunately for me, I don't have that dilemma of choosing between my phone and this compact camera. This camera still produces way better photos than my phone. One issue that I find using my phone is that I can get distracted. There are notifications and there are stuff in there that I usually wouldn't associate with photography. Additionally, I feel more secure bringing this camera on the streets. I know some photographers who lost their phone outside, but I don't know anyone yet who lost their compact camera. Snatchers gravitate towards phones in general. Gear is part of photography, so sometimes we have to sit down and talk about them. Based on this channel's analytics, most of you found me through either of these two keywords, street photography or Fujifilm X70. It's no wonder why I get so many questions about the X70. And to put it to rest, yes, for me, the Fujifilm X70 is worth it in 2021. I don't know how much it is in your area, what your budget is, or what you're planning to do with it, so I can't objectively advise you on whether you should get it or not. Instead, I have some thoughts for you. If you are planning to buy a camera for travel, don't buy something so expensive that you will not have money left to travel. If you are planning to buy a camera for street photography, don't buy something so expensive that you will be afraid to take it out on the streets. If you are buying cheap, make sure that it will not cost you more in the long run. Finally, buy something that will make you fall in love with photography. What is your everyday carry camera? Do you own a camera that you can't imagine ever selling? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, give a thumbs up and share this video. See you next time!